Hey everyone, we are going to be looking at the potential for a tropical cyclone possibly going to impact portions of the Gulf states here in the next couple of days. Before we could get into this forecast, I would recommend subscribing to the channel if you are new and do like these types of forecasts. Right now, we are currently looking at the National Hurricane Center, the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. We do have a disturbance out around the Caribbean um, we do have a 20% chance of a cyclone formation in five days. As of 2 p.m. Eastern Daily Time, Sunday, July 19th, 2020. Um, so, very small chance for this developing, but it definitely could go up in the following days. Um, but like I said, if, if, uh, for right now, it is going to be a very low chance for a tropical cyclone developing in this area and this is where it's currently right now right the, where that x is that's where it is currently located um right um just to the west of puerto rico as you can see there but it is expected if it does develop to develop in this type of area in that kind of yellow shaded area there uh it will be expected to develop in that type of area let's go ahead and look at the current infrared satellite loop and uh right here is where this disturbance is as you can see con some convection is um is really going on there it was more organized uh earlier but definitely it is weakening a bit as you can see there really not too organized um there's some convection going on uh there right now but mainly it's just rain showers in that low pressure right in there somewhere but you can't really see much spin you can really um see some clouds kind of spinning um clockwise kind of that uh, rotation there but you can't really see um kind of this whole thing spinning but you can just see those that convection really just uh, messing around in that type of area and that is expected um to um it like i said very small chance to develop and it will develop if it does develop it will develop um, back here in the Gulf and potentially make impacts um, for, on uh, mostly Texas and Louisiana. Let's go ahead and look at the models for this. We don't have too much models, um, but I can show you the um, uh, simulated infrared satellite loop, uh, the winds that are going to be within this, and the precipitation. All right, so right now we are currently looking at um, the GFS model. Um, so right here, like I said, this is currently right now. Uh, let's change my color here to pink uh, so you can really see this. So right in this area, uh, or I should have shrinking that a little bit, right in this area is where that disturbance is, and it is going to be heading about that westward direction into here, and then potentially um, uh, it, those, tropical, those tropical cyclone chances, chances could be going up in the next coming days, but right now it is very small. Let's go ahead and let's move this forward here. Uh, let's get over to around July 21st. Um, so right here is where it's currently at. As you can see, it's just below the Florida, kind of the southern Florida area. Let's move on here, and let's get over to July 22nd. And currently, it is now west of the Florida western coastline. You get over to around July 23rd. And you can really see some um, spin in here. Uh, you can actually see um, that inflow coming in there. And that's kind of making some spin uh, that's going to be within this. You can even see uh, kind of that tail there. Um, so it is kind of showing that spin there. We still do not have a low pressure, um, as you can see uh, over here in Mexico. You would usually see this type of icon right over here. Um, if it was even a low pressure, so it doesn't look like it's going to be very strong, mainly some rain showers, um, uh, potentially not even very gusty winds, um, uh, maybe gusting up to 15 miles per hour. It's really, really going to be very weak. Um, like I said, the tropical cyclone formation chance is very low currently, but could potentially go up in the following days. Uh, let's move on here. Let's get over to around. Uh, July 24th, and that starts making impacts on portions of Texas and Louisiana. Like I said, this is going to be very weak. Um, we're only really some rain showers in there. Uh, really only a rainy day is going to be for Louisiana. Uh, po potentially portions of Mississippi as well. Mainly it's going to be the uh, Texas and Louisiana coastline. And even getting into a deeper part of Texas, could see a rainy day for the day 
of uh, July. Uh, that'll be j around July 24th and July 25th, and that kind of uh, ver it kind of weekends, as you can see, as around July 26th. That pretty much moves out of that region. A job of those rain showers left over. The uh, let's look at the um, infrared satellite loop, and um, so we can really see um, how it's going to be looking like. Uh, so let's get over to around July 22nd here, or uh, July 24th, and you can definitely see this is not going to be very organized as all at all. But definitely there's some convection in there uh, that could bring some maybe some some intense thunderstorms or two. Uh, but really the convection in here is not going to be too intensified as you get to around July 24th. Um, that really that cloud cover is really not there as you can see um, but there's some lingering rain showers um, in those blue and green colors um, right in there but like I said mostly a rainy day for Texas Louisiana and potentially portions of Mississippi is what this disturbance is going to bring for the Gulf states uh, let's go ahead and look let's look at the um, kind of the STSTs uh, kind of the temperatures anomalies within the ocean and see um, the current's INSO status. Now here's the current sea surface temperature anomaly forecast. Right now, currently um, as of around 6 a.m. today, uh, July 19th, very warm waters as you're seeing here and even over here in the Carolinas, very warm waters are currently over here in this area. But you get some more cooler waters once you get into around the Texas, you can definitely see some more cooler waters in there that will weaken this disturbance. Um, but there is mostly for the Gulf um, of Mexico and these Caribbean, uh, pretty much this whole Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico area. You're seeing some very warm waters are going to be um, within, as you're seeing around uh, two or three degrees above average of Celsius. So definitely some very warm waters are going to be within this type of area for some uh, potential for a development um, of this disturbance. But really right now it is not looking like it's going to turn into anything um, major. Um, not even a tropical depression is going to be um, really super possible um, within this. It's just it's definitely possible but very unlikely for even a tropical depression uh, that's going to be forming within this. As you can see, a little bit of those more cooler waters and those um, those colors are more, are more of those lighter warm colors, which are indicating just a very tiny bit above average temperatures that are going to be within this Gulf of Mexico. Now let's look at the um, SST anomaly series. And this is the um, current... El Nino status and like I said and here we go uh, so we got that neutral currently as you can see right where that line is that is indicating that well right there is the neutral currently uh, as you can see earlier this year it was um, right at its peak and it's really started going down until it started going back up as you can see and it was at, back at its peak around the um, Mid July, around the early July, it was at its peak, but it has been going down since then. And right now, we are currently at that neutral status. So, um, so uh, like I said, uh, we are in uh, that La Nina watch. So definitely, we need to watch this for a potential for that hyperactive hurricane season this year. Um, like I said um, in my earlier videos. Um, La Nina means that uh, hurricane season is going to be pretty active. If there's really, really not much wind shear um, within uh, that west of uh, um, kind of that whole area where those tropical waves do develop, then we could have that active hurricane season. And there, very low wind shear is going to be expected uh, for this wind shear in that type of area. And we currently do have that neutral and that downward trend for that El Nino. So definitely, that El Nino is definitely pretty likely for this hurricane season this year. If you did enjoy this video, I would recommend subscribing if you are new to the channel. And make sure to share this video with any friends or family that may be impacted by this disturbance in the Caribbean. Anyways, stay safe.